everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar Channel, and today we are going to talk through three reasons to share an Apple ID with your kids. In my experience, there's a pretty even split between those parents who give their kids their own Apple ID with their first Apple device and those parents who have them use the parent's Apple ID. Either way, it's not generally thought of as a technique to control access and to keep tabs on what your kids are doing online. As a parent who doles out independence pretty reluctantly, it was natural for me to have both of my kids use my Apple ID, at least to begin with, and that was before I even knew some of the benefits. And now that my kids are older, it's still actually one of my main tools to limit apps, view texting and FaceTime activity, and to find my kids. It can also be a major pain in the rear end, so just make sure you're okay with the problems it presents if you do decide to implement this. So I require that my kids use my Apple ID. They don't get their own and I don't tell them the password. And here's why. The first reason is that I can control the apps they are downloading from the App Store. Anytime they want to buy an app, even if it's free, they have to ask me to put in my password. I like having control of what they're putting on their phones. And if your kids are sneaky like mine, they will use the 15 minute open period after you put in your password um, to download a whole slew of other apps that you didn't necessarily approve. I have that option turned on my phone um, to automatically download new purchases made on other devices for apps. So they just show up um, on the back page of my phone and I constantly know what apps my kids have and I can check them out easily since they are pre-downloaded for me. Obviously, I could just take their phones and look occasionally, but that, that takes remembering. And this is the lazy and distracted parents way to keep tabs on their apps. Okay, two mini tutorials. Number one, here's how to get rid of the default 15 minutes of app buying bonanza on your kids' devices. Go to settings, then general, then restrictions. You'll need to put in a passcode to enter this area. Scroll down to password settings and then choose to require a passcode for every app purchase, including free ones. I'll post a video soon about this whole iPhone restrictions area. Uh, quick tutorial number two. Here's how to have purchase apps download automatically onto your phone. Go to settings, then iTunes and App Store, and then turn on automatic downloads for apps. Remember, this is on your phone. If you do this on your kid's device, they're gonna get all of your apps like Pinterest and Weatherbug which in the case of my kids would make them not happy. Okay, here's the second reason to share an Apple ID with your kids. I can get their text messages on my phone or my iPad. I turn this function on my iPad sometimes, not always, but if I sense something strange is going on social, socially, then definitely. I can find out who they're talking to and what they're talking about. So two things to consider, number one, use this sparingly. I found myself getting a little too caught up in kid drama that wasn't important for me to know about at all. Plus you just, you have to let some stuff roll off of you like curse words and other kind of non-harmful kid talk. Um, and number two, most kids are talking by Snapchat now. So texting is becoming less important. Again, I can take their phones and read their text messages, but this becomes increasingly difficult as their phones become more welded to their bodies and as their bedtimes get later and later there's less opportunity for snooping. Again, this is a good solution for lazy and distracted parents. Um, here's a mini, mini tutorial on how to turn your kids' text messaging on your device. Go to settings, scroll down to messages, go to send and receive, and choose whichever cell phone numbers or email addresses you want to have on your device. Make sure you set start new conversations from to your own cell phone number. So this is not quite as important, but you can also turn on FaceTime from their friends on your phone. I never answer their FaceTime calls. Can you imagine how horrified their friends would be if my face showed up answering the video call? But it's helpful to know who's calling them and at what time. We are totally missing this information now that friends don't have to call the family phone. So use the same methodology for iMessage. Go to settings, FaceTime, and then choose numbers or emails. Here's reason number three for sharing an Apple ID. I use Find My iPhone all the time for my kids. Definitely when they lose their phones in the house, which is near daily, but also to find out where they are now that they both have a little bit more independence. 
And how about the scenario that we all know so well? You are calling and calling and calling your kid and they are either refusing to pick up or they can't hear the phone ring. So then I make the find my iPhone sound play on their phone, which is undeniably loud and obnoxious like this. And it won't turn off until they find and look at their phone. They do not love that I do this occasionally. You have to make sure location services are turned on to their phones. So on your kid's phone, go to settings, privacy, and ensure location services are turned on. Again, you can do this by knowing their Apple ID and password or by using the Find Friends app, but I find this a little simpler. Plus, I don't think you can play that obnoxious sound using the Find Friends app. And logging out and signing in as your kid, I find to be annoyingly cumbersome. So again, there are ways to do most of these things without sharing an Apple ID, but as a lazy and distracted parent, I appreciate this reminder of apps they are downloading, people they are texting, and their location without having to leave the comfort of my own device. Okay, here's the drawback. It can wreak havoc with your iMessaging and FaceTiming. If you have three separate emails and cell phone numbers using the same Apple ID, the phone sometimes can't keep straight who is sending the texts, but that really only applies to people we all send texts to, which is essentially only my husband and it applies to my kids as well in the case of my family. So this is why I only turn this one on for my iPad, but not for my iPhone. Like my conversations with my son will look like they all came from the same person. Like maybe I have multiple personality disorder or something. Or my husband gets messages from me, but they look like they came from my daughter, which is very confusing and disorienting for him. So the only way to prevent this from happening is to delete all of the history of the text strings and text him from a brand new string every time like this. The same thing with FaceTime. I can't FaceTime him from a previous attempt like this. I have to start each as a brand new conversation. You also get their FaceTimes ringing on your device, which I don't mind, but if they don't answer right away, it can be annoying or disruptive to whatever it is that you're doing. It can spoil a perfectly good game of Clash Royale. I'm just kidding, I don't actually play Clash Royale. So anyway, these are the drawbacks, but I like all of the advantages so much that I live with it and I make my husband live with it too. So to sum up, the three reasons why I share an Apple ID with my kids are number one, to control app purchases, number two, to spy on texts and FaceTime, and number three, to use Find My iPhone. I'm including all the steps for the mini tutorials in the video description. Please leave comments about what has worked for you and not worked for you with sharing an Apple ID. Thanks for watching.